Hey, coaches. Welcome back to another episode of Football Talk with Coach Chip. Kind of been going mad scientist mode the last couple, three days. Watching some good college football. 2021 college football season has been something else. And um, I save a lot of the games for watching later on when my season's over. And our season's been over now for a couple of weeks as we got knocked out of the playoffs. But I was wanted to share with you some things that I picked up. Well, one of them is from last year, and then two of them are I saw this year. And uh, even the one from last year is one I just looked at recently on some saved uh, game film that I have. Well, let's, uh, let's get started. All right, now, this is a pin and pull, of course, buck, as I like to call it, concept that Alabama ran with Devontae Smith, and they run it with Mechie. I've been very disappointed in them this year, not in their performance, but in the, that they haven't run as many of these kind of things as they did in the past. Now, this is exactly the way they ran it. And that, uh, this is not one of my diagrams. I stole the diagram just like I stole the concept. And I like it because what you do is you really, it, it's a good wing T mindset in the sense that you're threatening the field in several different directions. If you had a running quarterback, you could also threaten the field up the gut with like a, a quarterback trap or quarterback inside zone after you got these fakes. But what you do is you go stack and you go bunch trips on one side tight to the other and you run your buck to the tight side. Now, I think this is a pre-snap. They're looking at leverage to see if they got it over here before they do it. You know, most people, when they run the bubble, they're going to run the bubble to the inside guy, the two or the three guy. Now, they run it to number one. And what they're doing, they're getting, they're outflanking you from jump, putting a fast guy over here that can catch. Of course, that's last year's Heisman Trophy winner, or the 2020 Heisman Trophy winner, if you're watching this deep into the future, and swinging his fanny out here. And then you got these guys cutting off right here. And so what you do, you can just pre-snap it. You know, I got a really good friend. He's not crazy about RPOs, but he likes the pre-snap stuff. And so he can call it from the sideline or the press box. You know, and Alabama does a bunch of stuff like that. Now, I think their quarterback is the one that makes the decision. But you could do it from the sideline with simple signals. You got a guy in the box and, hey, you got numbers on the RPO or you got numbers on the pass, you got numbers on the buck, whatever you're going to do. And I also got some video of it. Let's look right here at the video. Now, you can see there wasn't much of a mesh. That's why I think that it's, pre, it's predetermined, it's pre-snap. They're just looking at leverage. And, of course, look what they got. They got three on two. You see? There's three on two counting the, counting the man catching the ball. And when that third man's a pretty good athlete, Right there, and you know, see, and I didn't even see uh, the running back Najee Harris even make a pocket. I think he probably told him. Let's look at it again. He probably quarterback probably said, "I got this." Didn't carry out much of a fake either. They knew they had it. Okay, so this is predetermined. But they're but look at the line. They're blocking the crap out of pin and pull, buck, whatever you want to call it. It's a good decision. You can see the only two guys that went with the uh, with the pass were those two. Look, the other nine are running with the buck. And again, like I said, these are RPO concepts that I stole from college football. I think they're things we can do. All right, here's one I saw Michigan do. This is a week after the the, the big game, as they call it up north, Michigan, Ohio State when Michigan finally broke, I think it was a nine-game losing streak to the Buckeyes. And uh, here's the diagram right here. Of course, they're doing pin and pull, too. Now, this is a Coach Chip diagram. Um, you got Buck Wright, a tight end over here. Now, I drew it up to the same defense that Ohio State gave them. And what they did, they reached, because it's pin and pull, they reached this guy. Okay, hooked him and got him inside, and they're out here. Got a guard leading on the corner, which is always good to see. If you're a guard leading on the corner or you're an O-line coach, you like to pick it on little folks. And then you got one wrapping right in here to get this cap, to get that backer. Boy, what, what 
really captivated me about it is the way they froze these two linebackers right here. And I'm going to show you a video of that as well. They froze these two cats. Absolutely froze them. Where, and if you look at it, they could have run. They could have given the ball. Okay. And again, I think this is predetermined. What they do is similar to the other one. The other one didn't have orbit. But you wind up with the same concept. You got two over two, and you got two on two blocking, and you got the orbit. And I think their quarterback was reading this cat right here. Now, I haven't talked with Josh Gaddis in about three years, so I don't have a clue what his mindset was right here. But it was good to see because I had known last year I had heard that uh, that Harbaugh kind of denutted him on the uh, on the RPO game. And maybe that was a good thing. They focused on the run game and got it established. But they ran some RPOs against Ohio State in the uh, 2021 version of the big game. Let's look at the video I have of it right here. Now, again, this is from the big game. You see what I mean? And all number three is going to do is just outrun those jokers. Let's look at it again. Watch it. They froze that Mike. I don't if they'd have given it. I don't think Mike could have made the play on the buck. Watch. See? Heck, that backside tackle got it. Was able to cut him off if he'd have gone to it. But I really like this. Watch, he's gonna go the you're gonna get the orbit motion. Boom. Again, no mesh. That's why I think it was predetermined. It's not necessarily by the coach. Probably told the coach the quarterback up, said, hey, if you get this, you're just going to throw it. Just make up your mind. We're not going to mesh it. This is what we're going to do. Boom. So there's no mesh. Boom. The quarter, I mean, the running back looks like he could have gotten it. The quarterback just stepped back and threw the swing. So these are RPOs or gifts or access or whatever you want to call them. Um, I know this, a lot of high school coaches I've talked to don't like calling predetermined or pre-snap reads RPOs, but I do know this. Sarkeesian calls all those that he did at Alabama, the ones with Mac Jones, like the one you just saw to Devontae Smith on the previous slide, he called them RPOs, you know, because there is a run-pass option, and you're just making up your mind based on leverage. And I'll, uh, I'll link up my leverage video down below, and you can go back and look and see what I'm talking about about getting leverage where you know you've got numbers. And I love this one. Now, I don't like the – not that it's it, – Lincoln Riley is an offensive genius, but do understand that we're talking about high school pick kids compared to major college D1 guys. This is the defense they gave me. You're going to see it on the video in just a moment on the clip. Right here you got a three, five, okay, and they're playing Baylor. It may have been short yardage situation. And they're going to take him, the F here, right there, and he's hitting the flat. This takes the strong safety out of the picture. All right. Then he's going to come right here in front of the running back as soon as the snap comes right here. And you'll watch Sam comes here because he's key in that backfield flow. Because I'm sure when the quarterback opens up to the right and F goes out outside to the right and Y comes right here to the right. They're thinking, oh, it's going to be a sweep, or oh, it's going to be off tackle right here. So he's coming up hard right here. Okay, and then the tailback is bending it back. And so I took it and toyed with it, toyed with it, used my Just Play uh, program that I have and came up with it. And this is the way when I put it in, and I'm going to run it because this thing here is just too easy, and it's just like taking candy from a baby. I'm going to run a little bit different, and I'll show you that after we watch the Sooners run this thing against Baylor, okay? So it's straight zone blocking it. Look at there, look at there. That's candy, y'all. That's, that's candy. That's candy from a baby. You'll see it again. I love this end zone shot too, or this drone shot. Probably courtesy of Fox Sports. Thank you very much, guys. All right, one more time. See 18 coming right there like he's going to lead. Boom. Talking about making guys wrong. 
Make them wrong. It's like old triple option football. Make the defense wrong. You got to love it. Now, here's how I would do it. And Okay, because it's something that I don't just put stuff, oh, that's good, I'm going to put that in. It's got to fit the offense. It's got to fit the offense. If you look, all I did was copy and paste a previous play, a previous play that I had done, and I added this, something we already do. We already run the zone, and you know guys that have followed me know against a split front like this, I like wrapping so we get angles. So you may say this is not zone. I don't care what you call it. You call it uh, one back power for all I care, kind of like Baylor used to do when Browse was there. Notice I still got my access over here, peeking over here. This corner's playing way off. And when he goes in his orbit motion, which they didn't do that, but y'all know I love the orbit motion. If that backer comes inside, this outside backer comes in here, and this guy's still playing off, you can take the gift. Okay? That's the access throw. But let's just say he's up here, he's pressing, or he's close enough that he's taking that away. You get the orbit motion right here. All right? Read this guy. Make it a true RPO, okay? And if he could, and this is why, and let me tell you why I'm running it this way. Again, not that I'm smarter, but I want it to fit what I do already. I want it to fit my kids, fit my offense. And also, I remember I'm coaching against kids. That's why instead of running true zone, I'm going to wrap this guard because so many high school linebackers are so well coached by the linebacker coach. And I'm not being sarcastic. I'm being serious that if they're key in guards, and if you play against somebody that runs buck and, and runs a lot of counter or power, they're going to they're gonna key guards. So when he sees that guard kick out of here and wrap right here, he's going to react to that. That's going to trigger him. So if that him being triggered by that wrapping guard stepping here is your quarterback's trigger as he sticks it in the running back's gut and is reading wheel right here. And you see your H is coming flat. So as the ball snapped, he's crossing face. So to him, it looks like power or counter, or it looks like zone where they're going to come back over here and kick the D in. Okay? So what you got, think about this. First off, you got this. Do you have the access? Can you throw it right now? Okay, put him in motion, whip it, and throw it. Second, now this is complicated. To me, it's easy to install but you got to have a quarterback that can process three things in about five seconds. Process this. Number one, is the gift there? Okay? It's not. Let's say it's not. All right, so you got your orbit motion. Look right here. Does this guy react? Before you snap the football, is he reacting to orbit motion? Is he bumping out? Okay? If he stays in here, he can make the play on the uh, the H wrapping right here, okay, running this gut, because he's running right at the gut. So just whip it out here to him, okay? If he bumps out with the orbit, okay, snap the football as soon as you catch it, eyeball the wheel. If wheel stays, give it. If wheel triggers on the pulling guard, disconnect, this guy here is going to be buck naked wide open as the day he was born. Book it. Bet. This cat's going to be open. Okay, as long as you can get this outside backer to bump out with your orbit motion. And you would run this time or two, and then you start, he starts staying in there. Then you're going to kill him with this because you just got, needs to be your best fast player right here. This needs to be your Devontae Smith. Those of y'all watched a bunch of my clips from a few years ago that I've shown a lot on Jets. My number two, Ty, that needs to be him. Your best guy with hands, your fastest guy with hands, that needs to be him right here. So when he catches and stress this, stay outside because we're not blocking this guy. We're not blocking this guy. So if you think, I'm going to cut back and get up in here and score. No, you're fixing to get hit. And you're going to turn a 20-yard gain into a four-yard gain. Okay. But this is good stuff right here. And that, of course, is stolen and adapted from Lincoln Riley, now of the USC Trojans. Okay. Don't forget our friends at Wright Equipment. Wright Equipment in Birmingham, Alabama. They got they outfit high schools, universities, gyms, 
specialized in high quality customized equipment for schools and gyms all over these United States. Talk to them today. You see their number at the top of the screen. Their website is right-equipment.com. Okay, how big your program is or how small your program is. Financing is available. Call them, hit them up on the interwebs and find out what they can do for you. Okay, concepts, RPO concepts that old Coach Chip stole from college football. Hey, until next time. Oh, I forgot. Hey. If you're watching this and you have not subscribed, come on now, it's free. You won't get any emails. I'm not signing you up for an email thing. You won't get any spam. I promise you won't. It just helps old Coach Chip out. Promise, promise, promise. Until next time, be elite.